continuing on this because a lot resides on uh, data, Carlos, our identity and what we do with privacy. Thank you very much. It's, it's again a pleasure to be uh, with all of you in this panel. We had opportunity to discuss that remotely via, via video conferencing. So yesterday during my presentation, I, I raised the issue of and concern of not making the human as a center of gravity of the fourth industrial revolution. So, so human needs to be in control of everything that is happening around humans and not the other way around. Now, one thing which is a highly concern for human is health. It's actually the health of the human, right? We are not talking about something which we should not be concerned. It is our health. And who says it's our health it has to be everything else. It should be our data, should be our consent, should be our identity, should be our control. Now, what has happened, if somebody in 2019 will have said that one day we will be providing bio data at the same time that we are showing our password, at the same time that we are giving our mobile phone, at the same time that we are providing our geolocation, they will say, this is crazy, it will never happen, right? So this is exactly what is happening today. We are every day, every time, every airport, every hotel, every facility, we are actually doing that. And this is creating a situation which could get out of control very fast. Because I mentioned yesterday about the issue of social media treating human as a consumers. But in the health industry, a patient is actually a consumer. The health industry lives on the patient, right? Sicker you are, more money the health industry is going to make. So behind all that is always a fight between who should own that data. Now, the, the, the data process uh, from collecting data from as simple as a COVID test all the way to the cloud, all the way to the analysis and back again to the response, includes many players, and many of them, they are not secure. And as a cybersecurity expert, uh, I always analyze every step of the security. And if one step is le maillon faible, it's the one that has no security, the entire chain is compromised. Three weeks ago, the United Nations was hacking Geneva. Uh, I, last week, uh, many major multinational has been hacked. The hacking is becoming an industry, the dark web leaf of that. <laughs> so it is so easy to compromise and hack a health industry organization that will not be secure enough to maintain the data. So what happened? The happen is that all that data goes to the dark web, all that data is then commercialized, all that data is available for hackers to further hack you. But there we are not hacking only our financial record, I mean, we could lose money, or we are not hacking, or, uh, you know, eventually uh, uh, consumer behavior. Here we are hacking our health. Here we are hacking our bio health. Now, the problem of these applications, and, and Weisky has been observing something like 60 apps, traceability apps, including the Swiss app, which, by the way, was rejected by the Swiss population because the security was not there is that they are so easy to hack. I mean, those, those apps that we are downloading our mobile phones, they are, at 99% of the cases, not cybersecurity friendly app and tested. So that means, for instance, they are not using digital identity. They are not segregating what we call the PII, personally identifiable information, who you are, uh, what is your blood, what is your DNA, all that data, which is supposed to be only under your control and consent, is now being provided together with your identity, which makes no sense because we have technology now like blockchain that allows you to segregate that. You can take your PII and encrypt under your consent, and then I can give all the medical data I want, but I don't want that medical data to be ever be related to me, my PII. My PII is myself, is owned by myself, and it's, it's like the key of your house, right? The key of your house is your key, and, and eventually you, you give to somebody because you invite that person into your house and you provide to that specific moment and person, they consent to access your house. But you don't give the key for always. You don't give the key un, uh, unconditionally. That's what we are doing on health. We are giving our keys unconditionally. So the way of solving that is already there. One of the things that has demonstrated the COVID uh, pandemic is that 
countries, then they manage to fight the pandemic through a sophisticated digital transformation strategy, part of the fourth industrial revolution, they are actually moving away of the pandemic with an amazing track record, protecting their citizens, protecting their health, and protecting their economies. Countries that they were not ready, they are actually suffering, and they are suffering a lot. And this is not only developing countries, this is include many European and even the United States, many states and others. And the reason they are suffering because the digital transformation has not been taken serious. So as we move forward into the fourth industrial revolution, these principles then, they have been very well tested and, and you know, humans have been able to defend many crises, wars, atomic challenges and others. We, we had technology that was there designed to avoid that all these ends in their own hands. The COVID situation, and I mentioned yesterday that in 20 years time, when we will look back, uh, we, have, we will have forgetting about the pandemic and the COVID, but we will have realized, and it was actually in 2020, that they will enter into a dangerous phase where all information is being used without our consent. The, uh, what is going to happen next? So as I mentioned yesterday as well, technology are converging. So now you have AI, which is getting expanded with uh, quantum computing and, and unlimited computing power with amazing amount of data. AI needs data, right? AI without data is like a children without education. AI needs data. And if the data is, is a data which relates to us, human, AI will analyze this data with our control. The uh, extension of AI, uh, which is what, what we call it, the uh, singularity on AI, it means the moment where one computer, and we are about 20 years to that singularity moment, one computer will be more powerful than one person mind, and more intelligent than one person mind. And five years later, the same uh, computer will be more uh, intelligent and faster thinking than the entire collective human minds put together. That moment of singularity, we don't know what is going to happen. I mean, computers will maybe see us as a very slow, very uh, unhealthy humans, uh, and therefore we need to be enhanced. And I, I, I tell you, one of the industries that they are expanding on the health, and this is the number one industry now in many countries, is longevity, is the possibility of extending the human life. I, I know many uh, friends in Silicon Valley then they made a lot of money in technology and now the only thing they think is they want to live 120 years or farther and for that they will do whatever is necessary to enhance themselves. So the creation of this superhuman or human with uh, unlimited health uh, capability and, and resilience is something that is contributed by the amount of data and amount of uh, information we are giving to those algorithms. So the solution, as I mentioned yesterday, is very basic. It's go back to giving the human the control, putting the human in the center of gravity. I, I fully agree about your char of in instant interconnectiveness. 5G is going to allow that. In 5G environments, your house is going to be a laboratory. Your toilet is going to analyze real time your bio situation and bio behavior. Uh, you're going to be tracked real time and you're going to be able to send that information, but under your consent. The important thing, as I mentioned before, if we do not give to the human the possibility of having a final say in what data they produce, final say on whether they want or not to indicate their PII at the same time they disclose the data, we will get automatically into abuses. Now, technology is there. PII can be encrypted. This is what our company does. Blockchain, and we had this discussion yesterday, decentralize uh, the information in a way that it is impossible to hack because it's decentralizing all the computers and they are part of the block. Uh, once the data is minted, either through NFTs or any other technology, that data cannot be extracted, therefore cannot be uh, modified, cannot be uh, manipulated and it is under the consent of the person. So I believe that this is also a business opportunity to the health sector. The health sector needs to apply the latest technology and the health sector by doing so uh, will advance faster, but they will need to abandon the thinking that a patient is a consumer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. <coughs> I think uh, I, I make the link also with what we heard yesterday on uh, 
Francoise panel on technology post-pandemic and uh, with Professor Suzuki presenting us the initiative on Japan related to managing global data sets, creating a strategic advantage by the ability to leverage artificial intelligence. And for sure, this will be one of the tools that we've not used well in the current uh, crisis, and that will definitely help to address some of the unknown, to discover some patterns that we might not figure it out ourselves in the way it evolves when you have so many unknowns. So I think it's a <clears throat> it's definitely an area where we have just started to look at it and I uh, agree with you. Uh, we have all these silos and this has been pretty mismanaged so far. So can we uh, uh, get our act together and, and have a good approach to this data set? I think this will be a difficult path. I would uh, leave for the audience the question of transhumanism aside. <laughs> it's not part of the debate, please. <laughs> so it's another question. Or otherwise I will have to give the word to Daniel again <laughs> for a very long period of time. Yeah, so. That we leave this aside for the time being, but on the data set, I agree.